How's it going everyone? This is Kevin. Today I want to bring along with me to compare the 4K 24 frames per second between the Sony a7S 3 and the a7 IV to see which one is better and cleaner. So let's jump right into it. Ever since owning my Sony a7 IV and a7S 3 I've kind of kept my a7S 3 as my main video camera for obvious reasons as it has a lot better with the 4K 120 all the way throughout with the 10-bit color and it's just a lot easier to use it for video since the 12 megapixels isn't the most ideal for photo and the a7 IV is mainly a great hybrid camera. But it dawned on me. Would the a7 IV be a better 4K 24 frames per second vlogging type of camera than the Sony a7S 3 My reasoning is because the Sony a7S 3 has a native 4K sensor versus the a7 IV having a 7K sensor being downsampled to a 4K, which is supposed to produce a sharper and better image overall. And that's according to Sony's kind of own website, so I'm just kind of stating what they said. So now for me, I wanna put it to the test and see if I can really see a major difference between the downsampling of the a7 IV or the native 4K sensor from the a7S 3 to see if it matters that much to know, well, it's gonna be a better quality footage with the Sony a7S 3 or the a7 IV and see which one would be a better choice for you guys to use. Maybe this one will be the best choice to have for an all, over, all around camera for vlogging and photo and everything or the video of the a7S 3 is just so much more superior. So we're gonna go ahead and get some footage using both of these cameras and I'm gonna shoot them basically at their native ISO. That way it's fair game with the grain and everything like that. So I'm gonna use my light that I have set up in here and I might do it outside too because it's kind of cloudy so there's not much difference in shade and lighting so it could work out as well there and i'm gonna just film myself and see how much better the i guess the image might be from one or the other we'll start with both like you know cameras one after each other and then i'll do the side by side for you guys to check it out you hear a lot of little noise in the background is because these guys were just wanting to play with their food and he wants pets And now that we're done with the ones inside, we're gonna go outside and compare them with that as well, just to kind of see how it looks with basically just me standing there. And now I'm gonna try to get some footage of just random things to compare them, like kind of side to side, since not always will people be videoing people. But that way, I think the easiest comparison always is with people, because you can see the sharpness on their face or not. Sometimes with other kind of, you know, landscapes and stuff, you don't need to see as much sharpness, I guess. But so we'll, we'll do that too. But we've got our system right here. I'm just gonna either do it there or I might just sit down over there. I'm not 100% sure if I wanna sit there, but we'll, we'll see. So I guess it'll probably be easier for me to sit there now that I think about it because then I can be in the exact same spot. You can see myself from the proper distance away and just set up the tripod that way. Now I'm gonna switch to the next camera and then after the, kind of doing a little bit more of the footage, I'm gonna put one of each to see if you can guess which one is which and then side by side so you can see them that way. And there we go, we got that footage done. So here are the footages so you can see them and then side by side. So 
So now the I guess next test that I wanted to do because it just kind of dawned on me would be kind of cool to do is shooting at their second native ISO quote unquote for the S-Log3, which the A7 IV is at 3200 and the A7S3 is at 12,800. So we're gonna do that real quick, which technically I'm already doing with this camera that I'm shooting, which is a Sony a7 IV, but I'm gonna do it with this one, and then um, then I'll kind of just do it with the other one as well, show you side by side, and then go from there. So after reviewing the footage, which one did you like better between the two? Since I know it's a little bit harder to tell with the compression of social media, but this is the whole point. Most people tend to post in social media to see which one would be best at the end of the day for that kind of scenario. For me, obviously, I like to make these comparisons because in real life, you're gonna be seeing it through a phone screen or your TV or your, maybe your iPad or computer. It doesn't matter. There is gonna be some sort of compression when it comes down to these footages, the way you interpret them and how you obtain them. So it's kind of cool to me to just put them side to side to compare them via your phone or whatever you want to, to see if it really matters to go and invest into these type of cameras. If you're only going to be posting, let's say on YouTube or depending on what kind of work you're trying to do with this setup, whether it's just blogging or is it just making me content creation for other people, client work, anything more higher value, you'll know best when it comes down to that. But that's the whole point of this comparison. As for me with the thought of it all behind, it all really depends i honestly didn't see too big of a difference when i was like kind of pixel peeping which you kind of have to if you really want to see which one's cleaner and better what i did notice obviously with the dual native iso that it's not native iso dual whatever for sony the a7 IV is cleaner because it only goes up to a 3200 versus the sony a7s3 goes to a 12800 so that right there obviously is a different kind of league but it's the same comparison because they're both of theirs like dual native iso so the a7 IV was a lot cleaner it just looks smoother because of that but then again you can do a lot higher iso on the a7s3 so it's you get more of that low light capabilities with the s-log3 with the a7s3 now when it came down to most of the footage when i was comparing the one here sitting down with just the normal iso the same thing outside i didn't really notice that big of a huge difference to kind of go oh there's a clear winner i mean the the a7 IV, the down sampling it's it's good obviously it's phenomenal but i didn't really see that huge of a kind of comparison from the a7s3 to go and say that you know what the a7 IV over sampling does the image such big quality difference that you should just go for that but it does make it known that you don't have that much of a difference either so if you're wanting to spend less money the a7 IV has great great footage coming out of it at 4k 24 even the 4k 60 and as a video that i've done before if you haven't yet is comparing the 120 frames per second between the a7s3 and the a7 IV to see if you could really tell a major difference and if you can't well there you go the a7 IV is a phenomenal camera to have and also good for photos because you have that 33 megapixel sensor but with that said as well the obviously the nighttime capabilities with it is a little bit more limiting compared to the a7s3 unless you know how to tweak it to your benefit which is what i have done before um, which i'm going to be doing eventually another video comparing the low light capabilities of each to see what you can do to make it better i guess if that makes sense and see if that'll help out for you guys if you're wanting to know more about the low light capabilities if you have any recommendations that you would like me to do in comparison with these two cameras to see if it helps out your decision please leave a comment down below and i would love to help you out because i know i'm sure that if you have a question more people will have it and i can make a video to help you guys out to help out your decisions obviously it's something that's very fun for me to do so i appreciate you uh, you know leaving comments and giving me ideas and checking out the videos and supporting with the liking subscribing sharing and all that stuff 
It really does mean a lot to me. Thank you so much for everything that you guys have done so far for me with this channel. It's been a lot of fun. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it when it comes down to creating these videos. And I hope that the comparison helped you guys out. But with all that said and done, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. Share this video with a friend. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.